Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. I want to show you a really cool way of using Reactor's new school sequencer uh, that allows you to export MIDI data from the sequencer and use it for your own purposes. So what we're going to do here is, is use this in Ableton Live. I've set up an open live set, or a new live set, and I have set up a MIDI track uh, with the name SEQ just to stand for sequencer. I have Reactor on this track, and into Reactor I have loaded the Life Instrument. Now, bear in mind, this is distinct from the, from the New School Ensemble, which can be found under Ensembles. The Life Instrument only contains the sequencer. The, uh, the Ensemble itself contains both the sequencer and the sound generation unit. But we just want the sequencer. We just want to export MIDI data from this and use it for our own purposes. So I have loaded this in. And the second thing I've done is to create another MIDI track and name it Recorder. And on this Recorder track, from the MIDI From dropdown, which in your session view looks like this. MIDI from, I have selected SEQ, which is the new school track, and then Reactor 5 in the second dropdown. I've also set the monitor to in, and I've set this to record. So the setup is basically that this track will record the MIDI data that is coming out of new school. Now what I'm going to do is come over here and tell live how much I want it to record. So let's set this Let's have a punch in at, at the beginning, and after four bars it will punch out. I'm going to set the master to record, and then I'm going to get this going, and we should see the MIDI data being recorded in there. Let's go. So there you have it. It recorded a nice clean four bars. Of course, we didn't hear anything because this MIDI isn't going to, to any instrument. There's no instrument that's receiving the data. So now what I'm going to do is create a third track, a third MIDI track, and I'm going to load one of Ableton's drum racks on here. Uh, there's one that I like called Granular Stretch, which is good for kind of glitchy sounds. Drop that in, and then I am simply going to drag this clip that I've just recorded down here to my new instrument. Now, the reason I like to keep this separate is that you can use this uh, to record the MIDI and just have it set up that way so that it's all, always ready to receive MIDI. If you put an instrument on this track, then you would have to alter the, uh, the monitor settings and make sure that it's not continually getting the MIDI data as it's playing. It's just a kind of workflow thing. Now another thing I'll do is come back here to my sequencer track. I'm going to turn off Reactor because I've found that when you have both Reactor uh, New School sequencing and have this MIDI clip down here, it tends to generate some pops and clicks, so you might want to do that. And now, let's hear what, what, we're, what we have here. So it's kind of a basic groove. Now, now all of this is going to depend on what snapshot you have selected in the sequencer track in, in New School. Here we just have the, the default snapshot, which is called My Home. But if we come back down here, we can go to one of the MIDI effects, pitch, drag this in, and select our hits this way. So if I tune this down by an octave, by going negative 12 semitones, now you see that it is using that kick drum for that lowest hit right here. If I can fold these up, I guess they're already folded. Uh, you can see that kick here. Another thing you'll notice is that the velocity basically comes in at the max. There's another way, there's a, a way to add some variety here that I'll show you later on. Now this is the basic way of doing it. So we, we've now imported this groove, which is really quite cool. Uh, but there's a way to add variety here, and I'm going to show you how to do this next. It, it really blows this open to all sorts of possibilities. So that's coming up next.